This is the first in a series of videos about unit testing. We're going to focus on the back end and using Node.js. Plenty of content out there about front end, so we're going to give back end some love. And everything you learn in here translates over to the front end, but the environment we're going to use is Node. Now in this episode, we're going to unit test some GraphQL resolvers. In fact, we're going to implement some GraphQL resolvers using TDD, which will give us the unit tests that we need when we're done. Now, in our scenario, we have an issue assigned to us. The schema is already done, the data source is already done, but we need some custom resolvers. So we'll go ahead and implement those. The schema and the data source are already there, and they are out of scope for this issue. A very common real world scenario is inheriting some code and building on it, and touching the other code being out of scope. So that's what we're going to do here. What's that smell? I'll be using a lot of oh my zish aliases and functions, and I'll go ahead and link the cheat sheet in the description. All right, let's find our issue. All right, we want to resolve the player's name with full name, okay? And we want to resolve their position to be the most specific. So instead of just infield, we want shortstop. All right, we're going to walk through our project here. Take a look. You can see here the ES Lint and Jest stuff that's set up. And I'm going to use GOT and have Apollo and GraphQL and GraphQL scalers. Don't need all this, but we'll go ahead and use it. All right, and here's our server using Apollo just to get some of the Apollo magic because we're kind of used to having some of that. So if we use it, we don't really need it. We can just use GraphQL tag and GraphQL JS. All right, so let's start a branch. All right, quick test. Okay, we got nothing, great. Let's open up our files and take a look at what we're working with here. All right. Let's make a new set of tests. All right, we're going to call this the person's resolver because we have a person over here. position to be as specific as possible. So we want the position name, I believe. All right, let's require our data source. All right, let's require our resolvers. that all right let's get a player going here okay Okay, and we want our first player's name uh, to be, let's see, where's Adam? Okay, there we go, Adam Cleric. Okay. 
Okay. And now I want to test the position. It's pitcher. Okay. Let's see here. We can build a fixture out of some of this data here. All right. Looks good. Okay, we'll use Corey and Dennis. So let's fix this up. Okay, plop these in there. Okay, good. All right, so yeah, we see uh, Corey's a shortstop type infielder, so we definitely want shortstop. That's more specific. Okay. things around a bit here all right all right so we want to make sure short stop okay to okay okay we want to make sure we have our return volume mocked okay All right, so we have failing tests, that's good. Check that in. Now we can implement our resolvers. through these and just return name and position all right okay that's person full name all right and then this will be position name all right good we don't need a resolver map here for just the simple custom resolvers okay all right let's see what is going on here Oh, yeah, okay. Oh. Well. We have to deal with the data source the way it is. It's part of the game here. Okay, okay. All right. We'll await those, and now we are looking good. <laughs> Just so you know, this actually works. All right, and there you go. Fantastic.